to another episode of IQ Project. Right here is my co-host Ricky Tat. What's up? What's up, guys? We also have Tony G in the background. Tony, get in there! Get in there! Get in there! <laughs> so right here, we're a special episode of the IQ Project today. As you see, we're not in the normal setting. Um, we are right here with artist Alan Padilla. Give me a tattoo. Over here, Alan. <laughs> you gotta come it to yourself, bro. You're, uh, yeah. Yeah. We metal, have to share one over there. <laughs> metal, metal fantoche. Yeah, metal, yeah. Metal. Just fourth, inaugurated. The fourth. The fourth. The fourth. The fourth. Fantoche the fourth. Yeah. So, hey, it's really hey. hard to get this guy on camera, so I have to get tattooed. Yep. I yeah, yeah. Is. Regulars. So, for. I am in pain, so most of the time, your car's gonna be talking as usual. Oh no, I gotta do all the talking. Now. I gotta do all the talking. Oh man, as usual. As usual. I don't know. This is gonna be new for me. I don't know. Oh well, let's get it started. You know, uh, Alan is definitely one of those artists that you always looked up to when you were young, as a young artist. Uh, you, know, you see him in Lowrider magazine. You see him all over. Anywhere that was the top or the best, you would see. Play girl. <laughs> there you go. You, you see all his work, and it's and it's always that super detailed black and gray work. And through time, you know, through us growing in, in the tattoo industry, um, we just kept admiring his work and wanted to uh, even get to a level semi close to his. But you know, he's he's so badass <laughs> that. It's, it's never gonna happen, but anyways, we're here and we're in his presence today and we're gonna get to know him. We're gonna get to know the true Alan. Um, he says he has interviews out there, but this interview is gonna be even more special because I, we already know him. We've got the fortunate uh, time to have talked to him prior in different other uh, uh, meetings, I guess you could say. Josh has gotten tattooed already um, once from him on the uh, outside. He did a badass chara that I was here to see too. So yeah, let's do it. Alan. Yes, sir. Sorry to, uh, you know, interrupt your mastery skills right there, but uh, how long have you been tattooing, bro? Um, I've been tattooing about, I don't know, I would say like 23 years now. 23 years. Around. You know, on and off. Yeah. On and off. Wow. wow. Around. That's a long time, man. Yeah. And uh, just, yeah. you know, so people, if they don't know about you, or they just heard about you, uh, what, what type of stuff, what are you known for? What type of tattooing do you do? Uh, I like to do a lot of realistic, black and gray, but also if you can say it, culture, you know? Like, um, I like to do like a lot of things, uh, uh, a, a story in it. Um, yeah, but I don't know if it has like, I guess realistic, you can say. Yeah. Like a name, specific name. Yeah, more like a black and gray realism with a definitely yeah, narrative to it. A narrative uh -huh. to it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Just uh, just seeing him compose this uh, uh, design on his inner, on uh, Josh's inner um, forearm is is pretty crazy. His thinking process of not just laying images together um, and then just starting tattooing. He actually thought about the composition that we saw. He added. He freehanded some of the nopales right there. How do you say nopales in English? Nopalations. <laughs> Nopalations. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna be mixing in a little Spanish into this because you know we 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 flow better, you know, and um, we'll probably translate this. I don't know. We'll see. But if not, you learn some Spanish. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> yeah. so, Carlos, can you do this for us? <laughs> I have a question for Alan. Yes. Shoot it. Shoot um, it. So you say you've been tattooing 23 years. What's kept you going for such a long time? Most artists get, you know, what people call burnt out. You know what I mean? What's what's kept your passion alive? I guess you could say. Well, I think it's important to to learn in life what you want to what what do you want to do? Like, what do you want? What is your passion? What what what? what I I was introduced to tattoos not because the money. Or the business side of it it was more the like i love seeing badass artwork in someone's skin and they take it forever you know what i mean it, 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 that's what it when i when i saw my first tattoo when i was 16 
there was this guy who got tattooed by this guy, his name is Gabo, a badass tattooer from Mexico, and he did a, a Jack in the Box, like, like you know what I mean, like a, like a little thing coming out of the box. Right. And dude, that, that was like, a, it looked like a sticker. And I didn't know at that time that you can actually do that, you know what I mean? And it was so nice and, and bright and, and beautiful done that right there and then I knew I was like, oh man, I, I wanted to do that. I always like to draw, I always like to to paint, well, drawing more, more than anything. But when I saw that tattoo, man, I, I fell in love. I was like, man, that's just crazy that you can have something like that with you forever, you know what I mean? And, and, and that, that right there clicked something in my head that I'm like, that's what I wanted to do, and I'm gonna do it for the love of it. You know what I mean? I wanna really learn it, I, wanna, I really wanted to see how far I can take it. And, 23 years later, <laughs> I still doing this and loving it. So, I think it's love, you know, yeah. more, more than anything. All right, guys, so if you don't know, Alan is uh, world known. He's been to many countries, tattooed many different people. Um, he's tattooed celebrities. He's had an amazing life. Um, did you imagine doing all that when you first started tattooing? Nah. I came from a small town. Literally, you can walk this town 45 minutes side to side. Oh. Like that small it is. Walking. <laughs> and this is Mexico, So, right? yeah. And it se llama Ciudad oh, San Hidalgo. Yeah. They call it Ciudad because uh, they used to make uh, the metro system. Mm -hmm. in, in Mexico, the whole metro, they was made where I'm from. So that's why they call it city. But it wasn't really a city. Mm. It was like a small town. And um, I never, I mean, this for me doing this and traveling and, and see the, the, the world around tattoo industry, it's just open, you know, open my mind so big and, and, and appreciate it mm -hmm. way more. So yeah, I never thought that I can go this far doing what I love, man. And, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. How many countries have you been in? Well, man, one day I did my taxes and we were checking all the flights and I visited in one year 16 countries. In one year? Was, yeah, it was crazy. Damn. Yeah, it was from, it was like one of those convention, next to convention, like we, I, I would show up just do my laundry and pack again and go to different country. Oh, so you still come back over here and then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had like, I had to fly over there. Sometimes, sometimes you get like, when we did London, you know, it was France. Uh, uh, so sometimes it was like next weekend, go from London to France to uh, Belgium. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and then, um, and then uh, I would come back and then I would have to go to, to Brazil, Colombia and mm -hmm. come back and you know like go to uh, Australia uh, it was crazy bro I remember one time I did six conventions back to back and when I went back to Mexico I was I was drinking a beer bro but I wasn't feeling myself I don't, it was so weird all the of course you know different timing Time different changes. foods different parties different places when I came back home I was just like, I never felt like that. It was just like my body was there, but my mind uh, shut down for, I don't know, it was so weird. Maybe like a drink, I, I not even like wanted to drink thing. anymore. I was one of those things that I was just, oh my God, like, like it, it was so hard on my, on myself doing traveling that crazy. So I stopped a little bit more, <laughs> especially from this pandemic, you know, like uh, I just stay home and enjoy myself and, Pain, create, so. Speaking about painting, we're here in this beautiful, beautiful, like, gallery slash wine um, lounge, I guess you could say. What, how do you call it? Uh, the artistry, what, how would you call this place? Your happy place? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a uh, concept that uh, Reno, my teacher, uh, my wife and I, kind of like had an idea to do a art gallery. Mm -hmm. And then um, I always loved this place. I, I used to practice here. I used to play reggae with a band 
they call Sunken City. And we used to, I used to have a little, little office where I tattooed, and then across the hall, it was the recording studio with the music studio. Mm -hmm. So I would like tattoo it and then uh, I would finish tattooing and I would go over there and play with them really? and record some music and it was beautiful. It was on this building. In this building here? Yeah, wow. so I used to, sometimes, I used to live in Bell Gardens back then. Okay. So when I was so late, I would stay here and I'd be like sleeping on a couch. But sometimes I would walk this way. I would walk through the whole building and, and when I, this, all this place, it wasn't two by fours. It wasn't built the second floor. It was just open. And I was thinking, man, I love this place. One day I would like to do something like a gallery or tattoo out of here. So it's crazy they came back to me. That was, that was and this crazy. was how many years ago? Uh, I would say around 14 years ago. 14 years ago. Yeah. It's crazy how life sometimes just yeah. like it comes around and it, and it happens the way you, you know, you manifest it in a way, you know? Respect it. Uh, and, and it was the crazy thing, too. It came back to me, and the guy who rented it before, he had a wine store. So when he, he retired, so he, he asked me, like, hey, do you, do you, want, you want to buy the license, the liquor license? Mm -hmm. So that kind of, like, opened this, you know, this, this new... Uh, how can you say like uh, concept, uh, concept yeah. of like oh shit I can I can also sell art and I can I can serve wine or beer and and they had a kitchen and I have a friend who's a chef so it was kind of worked everything worked perfect out. yeah yeah and so far so good man people people love love what we're doing here and 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 I do too it's, yeah it's a beautiful place guys um you know we'll show some of that b-roll of of this whole beautiful spot and it's just full of art full of inspiration really really dope paintings i wish i can buy all of them but you, know, <laughs> you can't <laughs> little payments there you go <laughs> no plans. um but it's very beautiful very uh it's very inspiring for sure all yeah, right so that's how how we start this place and <clears throat> that's cool man it's, it's, it's just, been it's been fun it's, it's crazy so I mean, you've owned multiple shops before in the past. What made you want to open a gallery instead of a tattoo shop? That was a, 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 our idea since uh, I was partnered with Carlos and Jed. Our idea was not to do a regular tattoo shop. You know, like at that time we were like painting together. We, we, we went to different classes. We, so we wanted to do it not as a tattoo shop, we wanted to do it an open space so we can show art and also it was nice to tattoo with no walls, we, you know what I mean? So we're, we're the ones who started that, like instead of um, have flash on the walls or, or dividers, dividers. Uh, we, we, we took the dividers out, the we, we tattooing like we're in a tattoo convention and uh, we learn from each other, you know, so it was a nice bigger space. So. That's, that was a, a nice idea. So, uh, having a, a, a gallery is, is almost the same, you know? Yeah, open floor. Yeah, open it's crazy. Floor. We, um, we're definitely inspired by that because that's how we you approach guys did Iconic. You, you guys know? did we, too. And it's just, nice, right? Like, yeah, it just gives it more open space. People feel the freedom of walking out around. They don't feel like... Because, you know, instantly if you put dividers in between each artist, it, it subliminally tells you like, oh, keep away, you know? Like there's a reason why, in our mind, you know? Yeah, yeah, and exactly. That's why we just said open floor plan and open concept just so that everybody can feel like they're all in the same um, space, not just, um, you know, different corners and whatnot. Yeah, and we love that. We, we worked like that for, for, for 10 years. The, we were just working together, uh, learn from each other really close, look at each other's, you know, over the shoulder uh, uh, I just love the idea of working with a team uh, did you ever just like grab ink and put it on and smear it so they don't see what you're doing <laughs> <laughs> like Tony does <laughs> like Tony. <laughs> we walk behind <laughs> Tony and he just puts a bunch and he's like alright like, right, see you later then we'll, we'll continue on going speaking of that Tony you had a good question what do you want to say 
Um, all right, Alan, so not only are you one of the best black and gray artists um, out there, but you also do amazing color oil paint. What got you started into that? Or how did you, when was the first time you tried that out? Or what interests you about that? And, Good question. Like I said, all my life I've, I've been drawing. So I I did pastels, I did watercolors, I did, I did acrylics. I, but uh, when I met uh, Reno, he he's the third generation painter, right? So so we become really good friends. We uh, and I start taking his classes and and. He literally teach me the oils is the easiest way to paint. He teach he 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 show me how to manipulate the colors and how to blend and how to to the point that like I was like wow like how come I didn't do this before you know what I mean I thought oils was really hard to do it's totally opposite it's the easiest thing to do that's why it's way it's easier hard. than it's <laughs> easier it's than watercolors it's easier than Acrylic. Shit, acrylics, of course, because acrylics dry so fast, and mm -hmm. so it's, it's, you can manipulate it, you can paint over it, you can change color, you can do do so 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 much, and you can detail it or be very loose, you know what I mean? So when I did it, uh, my my even I can I, I saw saw it on my uh, uh, tattoo work, it got way better. Because, like I was telling you, I learned how to do compositions. I learned how to do values, separations, uh, uh, contrast. So all these. Hi. <laughs> so all these. Um, okay, keep going, keep going. We're we're this is raw. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, I learned I, I learned how to do all that, and then I apply it to the tattoos, and now I can see my tattoo with be way better and different and, and and I love it man that's that's what I never went back to to any uh, acrylics or any other medium I just right. oil paint and pencil wow. that's amazing dude yeah and a lot of people ask me too like how come you don't do colors <laughs> when you can paint like that right yeah but I just feel that that black and gray lasts longer in, in the skin and that's the first um, the first medium I tried it, so I, I just love to keep it that way, you know. Yeah, we all we all wondered we all wondered why you know at the same time you do all this amazing color and and you stick to black and gray, but the way you explain it right now it makes total sense. And I, you know, and Josh has been doing um, your guys' um, art. What do you call it? Yeah, classes. Uh, classes. He's been taking program. the classes, and 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 you can see the difference, right? Yeah, Between. you can see it, and he's actually like focusing more on the details and. It's definitely leveling his tattoos to a different level, and, and all, all the most of the tattoo artists that come and takes that painting class, man, I can see the difference, nine and day and, and months, yeah. like the, the difference in, in value and color and, and I mean and just I, I guess it makes you more confident, right? Yeah. Like like even when if you're, you're just paint, doing black and gray, even if you're doing black and gray, so. I mean, you have a lot of great artists that come too. Like Eric Machado comes. Uh, yeah, Eric Machado is amazing yeah, in color. Right. And look at how like badass he's painting. And now he's, wow, like yeah. he, he's, so, he's awesome. Uh, you have any Terry. more seats available <laughs> in this class? Oh yeah, we, we do. We have seats, and, I, and I highly, I highly recommend that whoever wants to take this class is. is you get to learn by Reno. By Reno Gonzalez Masters. Yeah. Like I said, he's the third generation painter. His grandpa used to paint, his dad paint, and now he's painting, and and so he knows all the shortcuts. You know what I mean? Like, mm. so what, what better than that? And we've had many other podcasts talking about you know how you know how it is to have a mentor and how it is to find somebody that's done it because you said magic uh, a magic word right there, shortcuts. You know, the man's been painting for a long time. He's figured out a lot of shortcuts that he can teach. Exactly. And, and he's, smart. He's, he's so honest and he's, uh, you know, so down to earth. They, 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 he would teach you what he knows. And, and that's something that I appreciate and I love that he's like that. And, and right, he's like one of the most honest persons you can imagine. And, and, and that, for me, is a true artist. 
Andy's a Gonzalez. Andy's a Gonzalez. But he's Filipino. Filipino? Oh. We're we're like cousins. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> and is, is, is he ever going to learn how to tattoo or does he want to enter into We've been trying to tell them, but I think he's just. He's like. I gave him a fake skin. Uh-huh. So he could try it out, but he's like, I'm busy with the, with the Hawaii thing, our show. Oh, yeah, yeah I, I, I think he's. I think because he has such a momentum in in, yeah. in painting, you know. We're gonna get him for a podcast. Yeah. Yeah, I told him already. That's good. Yeah, for sure. You know, that comes to a question of uh, that I want to ask. You know, you're you've been doing this for 20 plus years, you know, um, and a lot of the people that follow the 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 podcast, a lot of, there are a lot of them are young artists, you know, young tattoo artists in the game are starting. They're asking, they have all these questions. How do I start? How do I get better? Should I get a an, an, a mentor? Should I get an apprenticeship? Am I at a am I past the apprenticeship? Am I at a beginner shop? Is this shop um, giving me value? For what am I? Are they helping me grow? Stuff like that, right? They're always asking these questions. We try to help them out through this this awesome podcast that we have. So, what tips can you give a young artist that let's just say he's past his apprenticeship, he's worked at a shop that. Uh, Maybe he just doesn't feel he belongs there. What what tips would you give for him to grow as an artist himself? If he doesn't the belongs there, just change your job. <laughs> Do something else. No, as like far as like is, uh, as far as uh, 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 like I said, learning. Damn, always look for s trying to work with someone is better than you. Always like trying to be humble enough to be like, oh, they're better and I'm gonna learn with them. You know what I mean? Like, like I always, I always, I always be lucky also, but also like I put my, my myself in a situation that I, okay, these, these people are better than me and I wanted to learn from them and I wanted to be, one day be at their level. Just, you know what I mean? So that way it's always like a friendly competition. They always gonna make you better. They always gonna make you grow. And definitely, Definitely take classes, seminars. Uh, that always helps. Travel and see what other country, other people is doing. They, it, it might work for you. You know, like you learn from everybody, good or bad. You know, so so try to to learn the good good and, and to like you you feel that you fit. It's it's, it's simple like like if you wanted to do it more traditional. Just go with people that does that, and go to the best tattoo yeah. shop, and, and you know what I mean. Or follow the best. Don't go to the seminars. Go to if you wanted to do even um, they call it what like black uh, black work. Now there's like a lot of dots and, and, and tribal and all that. Just, just, go there. So find yeah. find some shop that's doing what you it's like, doing and what go you there like, and yeah. try to learn from them. And, right? and learn it. And if it's not for you, move on and, and go to another place. That try something different. Maybe yours is color, and you didn't you didn't know. And, I don't know. It's, I got lucky because here in California, it's nothing by the best tattoo, black and gray tattoo artist. So mm. it it really pushed me to to grow, to on, grow. On, yeah, and do something different. And so yeah, I, I highly recommend that if if they knew, look for some someone they what you wanted to do. Look for what it makes you happy. You know, more than anything, man. The money comes by itself as soon as you, you, you do things, things with love. So tell us a little bit about uh, your design today, bro. I see that you, you're you finishing the lower half of uh, Josh's arm. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about this design and how you're inspired by it? Well, it's all about Mexican culture. We have the charra over here. As being it's like a delita, mm -hmm. and then uh, and then we try to make a story with it. Uh, so we we did like this uh, tequila shot here with some bullets, and we wanted to do something that kind of like um, connects the, the revolution with the Mexican side. So uh, our idea was between going Aztec or do something. Uh, more like a eagle with with a snake, like, you know, like you know, like that's the symbol of the the, the flag, the Me Mexican flag. 
So, so I thought that was kind of cool, do it our own version of it. So a little backstory behind this, like the whole tattoo I told Alan, um, I kind of wanted him to have complete freedom of the whole, my whole, the, the whole bottom of my arm. So I let him choose all the designs. Um, and basically it's, I again told him just do whatever you want. I wouldn't have done a mermaid, but. <laughs> yeah, so we have Mike came down. He works in the building as well. Um, introduce yourself, Mike. What's up, guys? Uh, my name is Mike Rivas. I work here in San Pedro, California. Same building along with Alan Padilla. Um, What's your Instagram? My Instagram is uh, Mike's Tattoos 310. You'll find me on Instagram, Facebook, Mike Rivas. Still have Facebook group? I don't even use it, so hit me up on Instagram, you know, I mean, that's where I'm always still have his high five, remember that one? <laughs> high five? Yeah, yeah, top five, huh? Yeah, yeah. People get butter because you're not in their top five. <laughs> hey, bro, yeah. that we're close. Yeah, that we're homies, bro. Yeah. yeah. Nah. But you're number six, don't worry. Yeah, you're number six, don't worry, bro. That's fucked up. That's yeah. why you gotta put top 20 so they won't all get butter. Yeah. Uh. So I actually met Mike because um, we both do Reno's class mm -hmm. on Fridays. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, he's nice. actually doing a badass painting right now for his brother. Thank right? you. Thank That's you. beautiful, man. Yeah. Thank you, man. Mm -hmm. Just chipping away little by little. Um, thanks to Master Reno, you know yeah. what I mean? Giving That's us that what knowledge. we're talking about. Yeah, he has so much knowledge that he's willing to share with us and definitely an honor, you know? It makes it look so easy. Yeah, just... Yeah, just like that. Just like that. He said, just like that. That's his signature. So we have a quote for him right here. Yeah. We're, we're going to make a shirt for him because uh, every time he teaches us a new technique, he just looks at us and like, just like that. Yeah, yeah exactly. just like that. Yeah. He'll do like a sick-ass painting of some grapes and quick and two seconds be like, yeah, and uh, just like that. And it, looks so, <laughs> it looks so hard, bro. He like, 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 just like that. Yeah. Like, how do you, you? How do you mix these colors? He's like, oh, mm, mm, mm. Yeah, and just like that, did you get that? <laughs> Bro, I just remember you just dipping one color. Like, <laughs> Takes me about, what? I think the grapes are the hardest thing for me. Really? Yeah, dude. Yeah, I have Because you have to grapes. do the grays underneath, and then you have to do the... Then the, the colors. Yeah, the colors after. But I, I had fun with the grapes, you know what I mean? The, the label is what really was hard, you know, doing the lettering. Yeah. I know you're, you're about to do yours. Horrible. Way on now. It's my last thing. Yeah, but yeah, Josh's painting is looking amazing as well. So, yeah, you know, all of you. <clears throat> I, I mean, we were just talking about how 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 much it helps you, it helps you on your tattoos painting. Yes, right. Yeah, definitely. I feel like um, I incorporate what I've learned here into my tattoo work, especially with tones and all that. And, you know what I mean? Because you only do black and gray as well, right? Yeah, only so black and gray. How do you feel like painting color? You know. Um, I like it because I, I do like color. It's just I feel in a tattoo aspect is, is different, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and it's helping me learn different types of colors as well. Like, I don't know anything about mixing or, yeah. you know, so doing this, it, it's, it's different and it's fun. It's new to me. You feel you know? like it, it confuses you while you tattoo sometimes? Sometimes, like, you know, it's hard when you try new things and... Yeah. and you step out of your comfort zone, and if it's not looking as well as you plan, you try to like switch back to what you know. But you know, it just takes some time. It takes some, some, you know what I mean? Some courage to even step out of your comfort zone, and even trying it. I'm trying. I told Alan I'm trying to get Tony to come. Yeah. Tony? For Tony next time. Oh yeah. Yeah. You paint? Man, come on. No. No. He wants to learn though. I think it's. I, I just looking at it, I feel like it's really hard. It It'd looks be really hard to learn, you know. Yeah, it. I'm oh, sorry. I don't say, but I do. I do see like the, the value and, and just like how much he's improved in his tattoo work. Just to, and I know it's because of painting. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And we were asking Alan earlier about also about how painting helps with his uh, tattoo approach. You know, mm -hmm. he said it's a big big coordination. You know, it goes hand in hand. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's just different tools. You know, what I mean, what you learn to. Like uh, painting now, you use in this type of brushes, needles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very painful brush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, very painful. <laughs> I paint with a painful brush. That's what I'm gonna call it. 
Yeah, man, but you, you should take take the class, and you know, it, it's fun, you know. Yeah. You brought your homie in, right, and he liked it? Yeah, my boy, um, Mondo's, or, Mondo's mm -hmm. uh, Rock's brother, he loves it, man. You can tell he's always looking forward to, to every class, you know. And I'm glad to see him improving in his work, you know, from doing that as well. Yeah, I brought I brought in Casper uh, uh, also, and look oh, how Kasper. good his tattoos become. Oh now. yeah, like, yeah, he gets his down. His paintings, it's, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, his work's amazing, man. Yeah, we're now they're selling it. We're gonna have to sign up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. Right. He's, He's got to see where what classes are available. Yeah, yeah. Calendar. Highly recommend it. Highly recommend. Yeah, definitely. Cause this is knowledge that you know what I mean. Oh, it's some knowledge that you can't get anywhere else, especially from Reno, you know? Yeah. And if you smash it with the pole, you know he likes you. <laughs> <laughs> he must not like me because he hasn't hit me yet. <laughs> you know, my bad, Reno. Does he hit you with the pole? <laughs> he dropped it on me. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I thought that's why he was always calling it the, uh, what is it called? Filipino. Filipino. Fanny stick or something like that? Oh, yeah. Fanny stick? <laughs> fight, 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 fighting stick. Yeah, fighting yeah. stick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he hasn't done that. Oh, he'll get it soon. <laughs> he'll get it soon. He'll get it soon. <laughs> yes, it's like an initiation. So, I remember when we first met, or I first met you, you were telling me you used to live right there by his shop, right? It was the first one. Timeline Gallery? Yeah. Did yeah. that inspire you a lot? Yeah. Um, yeah, especially that location and timeline, man. I, I I really, you know I mean, looked up to all these guys, especially when I'll pass by, see the place, like, chandelier, all, like, hooked up with some artwork, like. And they actually let you in? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've been in there. Yeah, I was in there before Bob Terrell was tattooing at that uh -huh. time. Yeah, I got to see Bob Terrell do some work. Um, but yeah, everybody's cool in there. You yeah. know what I mean? I always kept it humble. But it's crazy to see how, how far Alain has come, you know, mm -hmm. in his work and his career. Dude, Bob Tyrone was one of the first ones. I say the first one that inspired me and I looked up to. Yeah. When I first started, I remember like, I was like three months in and I went to a Worldwide Tattoo Supply and I bought oh, yeah. his, his ink set, his black and gray yeah. set. Yeah. And I told my brother, I'm going to practice on you, man. Let me just do one of these, <laughs> one of these drawings that's, up, that's on the on the. Now I'm going to tattoo like Bob Tyrone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, yeah. yeah dude. And, yeah. And honestly, like, his work was just like my biggest inspiration to, That's to start, you know? Yeah. And this is 10 years ago, you know? Wow. Yeah, he's been in the game for a long time, man. He's also the coolest dude ever, man. Yeah. Chill. Very oh, chill. Oh, man. Like, so yeah. chill. Uh, I finally got to meet talent, him. Talent, talent. Oh, cool. at the um, Golden State? Yeah, when I met Alan and these guys. Oh, dope. That was cool to meet him. Yeah. Yep. When he met us too. <laughs> Who am I? No, this guy. So I met all these guys. Oh, for real? Yeah, oh, same, no. that same day. You can't get rid of him after. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stuck like glue. Yeah. It was crazy, dude, because I really looked forward to like meeting Alan, because I, I, I used to work with his cousin at a warehouse. Oh, and, no uh, shit. Yeah, yeah. So this is the one that told me about yeah. Alan, and, and then finally I met him, and then now, look, now I'm right here watching the tattoo, dude, so it was pretty cool. Crazy how everything works out. Uh, mm -hmm. Same, man. You know what I mean? I used to look up to Alan when I first started tattooing as well. Yeah, I, I remember you. And he's, he sees start. me coming around yeah, all the time. Sure. And, you know, <laughs> the window. Yeah, like real shit. Like, Same thing, this guy, what's his name? They went Frank Sanchez. Frank. He Frank used Sanchez. to come to our yeah. tattoo shop and just look at us. And his brother, too. And they would come and show yeah. us their drawings. And I was like, damn, these guys wanted to do something nice, interesting. Yeah. Really cool. And look I at, think. Look at him now. Yeah. And I think it's when Frank. You know what I mean? Went to Inkslingers and he started blowing up and I seen how he did it because he came from the same city too. And I, I knew who he was before he went to Inkslingers. So when I seen that, that inspired me to even want to do this full time because I was doing this on the side and doing the 9 to 5. So I took that route and left that 9 to 5 and sacrificed my my whole day into tattooing. And it, it, that's, that's, that's a big thing when you because I used to have that same thing. I used to have a really nice job. They, they were paying me good. I, I had insurance. Oh, the construction? Uh, yeah, the construction side. And, and, and I w <laughs> we were doing pharmacies. And man, like that jump to like 
have something secure to jump to follow your dreams and and you know you, yeah. you always have that like man if i fell like you know what i mean like yeah. but it's also really cool do it and just go all in you know what i mean it's like right. fuck it it's all my marbles there yeah and and then you 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 appreciate it later when, yeah. when now you're working for yourself now yeah. you're traveling talk to yeah. amazing people yeah. and, and, and it sounds like your story too crazy <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's, it's so cool, man. But it's just that first step. Yeah. The first step out, you know. And everything. everything. Just and fucking do it. And it was crazy because, uh, like, at, jo at my job, I was daydream about this right here, right now, what's going on. Mm -hmm. Before it happened, and I knew I seen the vision, and it's crazy to finally see it. You know yeah. what I mean? Exactly how I pictured it. Maybe not as fast as I thought, or, you know, I mean, a time period, but I knew it was going to get there eventually. It just having faith in what you do, you know what I mean? Look at you now, tattooing all these athletes. Trying, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. But like he said, it makes you appreciate everything more mm -hmm. rather than just being handed to you. And you know yeah. what I mean? Every little opportunity you get, you know you take it. And you take it to the furthest extent. So how long have you been tattooing for? I would say like 10 years. You know, mm -hmm. fresh out of high school, I didn't know I was going to do it. And, got introduced by one of my buddies and I was always into a tattoo culture because my brothers used to all get tatted. Mm -hmm. So, you know, after that, it just, you know, woke me up knowing that there's something into this industry, you know? Mm -hmm. You just breathe, eat, and sleep. So what, what's the, what's that thing that, like, I mean, for you too, Alan, like, what's that jump that made you say, fuck it, I'm gonna go all in? Well, for me, it was the, like I said, I always wanted to be an artist. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to be an artist, or a tattoo artist, and and anything that had to do with with painting and drawing. And uh, but I, I'm a fast learner, if you can say it. Like when I was doing the construction, I I started from from literally scraping floors, and I got I got I got to be like one of the top best pay because I learned from all the way from the bottom and then and then I had to like, I was almost foreman, like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they, they used to give me gas cards per diem. They used to, get, you know what I mean? Like full insurance, mm -hmm. so I used to have, so what I did, I saved my money. Like I was saving my money, like I would spend, from every hundred dollars that I got, I would spend twenty dollars and I saved the eighty. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, I don't know, I learned that from my mom, she's like, like that kind of person, they're like, hey, just save your money, save your money, save your money, right? So I started doing that. Into one point, I got enough money to pay the rent like five, six months ahead. And now, so I, that, that, that gave me like a little cushion, uh, a cushion to to go for it and, and be like, okay, if it works, at least I have a backup. But, but it's still like not having insurance, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like not having a stable job, it, it's kind of like, it's scary. scary. It yeah. is scary. Yeah. But when you start doing it, and, and then and then when, like I said, I went for the quality, not much, not, much, not so much for the money. Mm -hmm. like, that's another thing that I, we were talking about earlier, you know. Mm -hmm. And and then I was like, damn. I, and, and 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 also, but it made me happy. I wanted to be an artist, so this is what I wanted to be. And yeah. and that's how, how that's how I jump into it. And then I was. Uh, like I said, I got lucky also because I put myself out there to work with with the best. You know, I was I was drawing with pine. I was tattooing and and I like kind of like walking shop. Um, I started getting more clients. I kept like drawing and, and selling my flash to to other to other uh, places. So that's why how I grew my name in the industry. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, the rest of this story right here. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Mike? Same, same thing, man. Just uh, what were you working on before? What was that? What were you working before? How what were you doing? No, like uh, no, no, I, I, I just doing like regular like house like warehouse jobs, bro. No. And um, my brother's an electrician, so I was trying to get into the refinery, be electric, you know, electrical. And yeah, um, yeah I guess art always been part of my life, so I, I always wanted to do it, and. Being able to do that for a living, I think that's the biggest 
thing, like doing what you love. You know what I mean? It's, it's better than going to work and dreading it, you know? Yeah. So I think seeing artists like Alain and everybody doing what they're doing inspired me to want to be like them. And doing this 100% was the only way. And you know, my family, they're scared for me too. They, they didn't see the vision I did. And they're like, sure, yeah. this is what you want to do. I'm <laughs> like, yeah, like, you guys don't know, like, what, 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 you know, the vision I have. And now they're seeing it now, like, coming to play, and they're, like, now proud of me. You know, they're scared at first, but, you know, that's what life's about. Like, you got to take those chances. If you fail, all right, cool, you did it. You know what it is. You know what to expect next time. And, and maybe collect from that, learn from that, come back mm -hmm. even harder and know what to do. Um, there's, there's always, you know, bumps on the road, so... Yeah. I mean, that journey is what makes it all worth it, you know? And I think seeing these guys and being around them and to actually be learning, that, that's that's the biggest thing. Like you said, it's all about the art, not about the money. Yeah. You know, the money comes along as long as you're true to the art. And you also, uh, 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 it's better, I always say that it's better saying, I tried it and it didn't work, then always keep in your mind, like, man, I should have done it. Like, yeah. oh man, I, you know what I mean? At least, at least you tried it, and if it doesn't work, yeah. you come, you, you come back a, a, a step back, but you're still on, on the path. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. if it doesn't work, okay, at least I tried it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know? It's like, I, I'm a scared of heights, and I jump out of the plane, and I tried it, and I never do it again. But at least <laughs> I tried it. <laughs> yeah. Shit, my pants. Man. You know what I mean? And I tried it, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. I would never do it again, but it was I fucking did it. Yeah, it's crazy. And you got him. Yeah, yeah, like, I like how everybody just has an origin story. Like we we talked about ours. I mean, I don't know if you want to share yours, Tony, but I mean, his is the most recent one. <clears throat> yeah. Like when he told me he quit his job, I was like, damn, you sure? Yeah, he had, a baby, he had a baby on the way. You know? oh, yeah, it's yeah, tough. That's, that's, that's tough. I had already a nine-year-old daughter who I have to provide for. I have a baby on the way. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's crazy. Um, I have my full-time job, like you said, with insurance and everything, and um, it, it, it's it's tough, dude. It's a tough decision. But waking up every day at three in the morning, hating your job and where you're going, you know what I mean? It's like no, and it was always in the back of my mind that I never tried and gave tattooing 100%, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's what always got me. Like Alan was saying, like you never try, like you never, you're always gonna wonder what would what would it have been if I would've tried, yeah. you know? And I, I, I didn't want that. I was tired of wondering what if I would've gave it 100%. So it's was like, we went to a seminar, me and uh, Josh to, with uh, Daniel Rocha. Yeah. So I took my two week vacation. Um, I got tattooed by Vito. Yeah, that, then, then, like, a, a few days later, we went to the seminar with Daniel Rocha, and then when I was over there, I was like, I'm not going back to work. <laughs> After three and a half years of yeah, working yeah. there, I didn't tell them I was quitting. I just, I just didn't go back, you know? And you just never heard from me again, yeah. dude. <laughs> That's it. Cause like that. Fuck you. Fuck you. Man. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. So you, you got the taste of the lifestyle of an artist. What, that... Yeah, what it could happen. Got tattooed by Vito. I saw what he, what, what could be done. Yeah. We went and saw Daniel Rocha and his shop, and he said it himself. This industry is really fruitful, but you have to dedicate yourself to yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And look what Daniel's doing. You know what I mean? So yeah, I crazy. Like, Man, like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna do it. I got pumped up. <laughs> yeah, we're <laughs> taking Daniel. I quit my job. I was done. Yeah, uh, we're taking Daniel to our <clears throat> convention in Viva La Tinta in Guadalajara, which I like. Everybody should go. <laughs> Everybody should go. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so you he's what? gonna he's gonna do a, a yeah. Uh, Time to a seminar there, yeah. yeah. So that's awesome, man. Yeah. That's crazy. So that's but like, hard. like in your situation, it's more scary because you yeah. already have kids, and yes. it's kind of like, yes. yeah, you you have a lot of. A lot of when, when I did the job, I was just kind of myself, you know. Like, yeah. if I lose it, it's, it's just me. But mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's crazy, bro. Yeah, see, and you're taking the sacrifice for something greater, right? Yeah. And that's a that's a thing too, like I mean a lot of people that have potential, they got so much time and I know they can make it but they're scared. And yeah, some have kids and some got responsibilities and, and they just give up and get a regular job when I know, man, these dudes will kill it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It just they just and, don't have the heart. And I built myself to that point. I did what Alan did. I saved up money. I saved up. I saved up. Once I had that six month cushion, like where I could pay my bills for six months, I have a six month window where I can. Yes, you can look for a job. Work. 
You know what I mean? Like, give yeah, yourself yeah. to the last two weeks to look for another job. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I said, if it didn't work, I, I, told, I said, if it didn't work, I could always go work at Amazon. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That can be over, driver. <laughs> you can't go back to the other one because you burned that bridge. I know. <laughs> he said, fuck it to everyone already. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. I, I did it that way because it didn't allow me to run back. Yeah. You know what I mean? To a job that I had for three and a half years, I was a lead there, you know, and I, I couldn't go back. And for like the first yeah. month, it was scary, uh, yeah. not having that steady paycheck every week. Yes, you know what I mean. It was lovely. scary, and I did want to go back, and I did. You know, I wanted to run back, and I was. I, I didn't realize. I called it at the time um, warehouse withdrawals, and I felt like working at a warehouse and depending on that paycheck had kind of crippled me mentally to where I couldn't do it on my own. You know, and after being at the shop, it's like okay, I have to do it for myself. I have to book my own appointments. I have to find the people. I have to. I have to keep it going, you know. Nobody's gonna do it for me. I have to, yes, I have to put myself out there, and and it kind of, it, it took me off of that, that crippled mindset of working at a warehouse, just showing up, getting the paycheck every week, without having to put much effort, you know. Yeah, it was so easy to just do that, mm -hmm. you know. What I mean, being like a company. That's another thing, you know, like 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 when people uh, people are scared, and I and I I saw this in a in a in a, in a meme in the beach. Mm -hmm. In, in Instagram, they said, "Man, uh, I used to, I used to work for somebody else eight hours, right? And uh, and I used to work, you know, 48 hours a week or whatever. And then he said, now that I quit that and work for myself, I work 24 hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, what right. I mean? so it's like becomes you work more, but yeah. but now it's yours. Yeah, you it's know? Like, like instead of using your time building somebody else's dream." Why don't you spend that time building your, dream. your own dream? Yeah. Your own dream. And that's, that's the, hours. But, but yeah, that's true, man. Like, you become your own boss, you, you know, you got responsibilities. But, it's, it's but at, the end, at, at the end of everything, it's like you're happy. You're, you're happy. very happy with yeah. what you're doing, what you're creating, what, you know, and I think that's the, the beautiful reward. Mm -hmm. that, that yeah. you have at the end of the day. Oh, Did you yeah, get those Rikis. withdrawals too, Ricardo? Huh? Did you get those withdrawals Did too? You want to run back this to guy the, worked at a job for what, no. 13 years? 13 years. <laughs> Doing what? Uh, landscaping, maintenance, and all that. Yeah. I still have dreams that I have to wake up at 6 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to you, that's all traumatic. That's, 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 that's how traumatic I was about, you know, wanting to jump and do go all in and tattoo, you know? So, like I said, like, I don't remember when, but recently I just wake up and I'm like, wait a minute, no, you don't have to. You fucking start at 11 if you want, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but it was just that much of a trauma in the decision, you know? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's cool, man. This is, this is dope. All these gems right here you guys are dropping. Drop some more, man. How'd it happen for you? Let us know, man. Yeah, just being consistent, man. Dude, honestly, me, yeah. I kept hearing uh, what Gary Vee says. I don't know if you guys know who Gary Vee is, but um, he's a mentor on YouTube, and and he just said, hey, you know, do you want to live with regret? Saying, I, I could have done this, I could have done that. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I don't want to live with that. It was already bugging in my head, so I was already tired of my job. I didn't have a purpose. You know? Yeah, you also had two kids. I also had two kids. <laughs> yeah. And I also had bomb benefits from the school district, which is like fucking the best you can have, yeah. you know, because it's yeah. in a union. Yeah. So, and, and also scared of people saying, like, why the hell would you quit there? Nobody quits those places. Those are like, you know? Yeah, exactly. But I wasn't happy, so I put my happiness over comfortability, you know? Yeah. And when I went out and I quit, I literally quit. Physically, I was I quit like a year ago. I mean, mentally, mentally. Physically, I quit a year after that, and then the next day, I took my family to Disneyland and never looked back, dude. That's dope, man. Yeah. And, you know, there's people that say that because they're scared to take that chance, you know what I mean? They question you because they wouldn't do it, you know? Exactly. And shit. And sometimes you'll be in situations and places that they would never be able to be in, you know what I mean? Right. Like, it's crazy, bro. Oh, yeah, you like, said it, yeah. And especially to become, like, for us, we're the only artists in our family from a huge ass family. Yeah. You know? As we're first generation, you know, mm -hmm. we have that family background where, you know, um, tattoos are bad. This is bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> I think. Yeah, when I started tattooing, all my family was against it, man. Like it was, my mom wanted me to, my mom worked on, on, on La SEP, que es la Secretaría de Educación Pública, las escuelas. Mm -hmm. Y mi papá estaba trabajando en, 
doing blueprints to building uh, schools in uh, uh, pueblos también. So, ellos querían que yo hiciera eso, you know? Querían que fuera un doctor o... o Always a doctor. Yeah, it's always a doctor. Because <laughs> yeah. over there, is, that's what it gets paid yeah. more, the most in Mexico. Yeah. yeah. Si tú eres un doctor o un abogado o un este ingeniero, you know what I mean? It's, so when I quit the, the man, my, uh, the school to to draw and so that was oh man, <laughs> they were like all hating and and I mean I know they they wanted to, you know do good for me and mm -hmm. and they want the best for me, but. I have actually that's something that motivates me to prove myself against my family that I can that this is a job that this is a, a something that you can this is a lifestyle mm -hmm. you know what I mean like that's 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 something that I, I I always keep in my mind I never coming back with with you know me, me, with my hands crossed I, I never coming back to the same place uh, I always want to improve I always come back and, and proud yeah. And I did, man. And, and my first tattoo convention in Mexico, I took my mom. Awesome. Uh, uh, and I took my mom there and I showed them all the like badass artists, you know. Paul Wood was there, uh, I remember, in Mexico. So I was like, oh my God, look at this. And my mom is like, oh, that's miedo, you know? It's scary because it's <laughs> all devils. And I'm like, oh, but look at the quality of work. Yeah. And, you know, and then I was showing them all these artists that I that I study and, and look up to. And, and then she's like, oh, man, mijo, I didn't know you guys, you can do that on skin. Mm -hmm. oh, I didn't, you know, so yeah. I changed, I, I switch the, the mentality on like, it's, 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 they, it's, it's you know, it's, it's duty or, or, or it's for criminals or, yeah. or, yeah. or, yeah. or the stigma, the stigma and, and, and the taboo of, no, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's art. Mm -hmm. And then when I, when I moved here to California, I took my dad, my, to the, my first convention in California, I took him because my dad, my mom and my dad separated, so my, my dad was already living here. So I took him to, to uh, I remember uh, it was the Inkslingers Ball. I don't know, that was a long time ago, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, and I showed them too. I'm like, look at this, look at this artist, look at, yeah. you know, and I was showing to ev everybody around, and and my dad same thing. He doesn't have any tattoos. He, you know, he still have the old school, old school mentality, but. At least he saw that I was really into it, and and how far you can take take yeah. it, you know. So that was that was that was that was really cool. Was dope, man. That I make them switch, and now they're all proud of me. Like yeah. now my dad is sending yeah. me customers. Yeah, oh, you yeah, gotta yeah. go to my son. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my son is tattooing so and so, or you know, and, and that's that makes me feel well, really you know, so you good. You told me that you you did your first painting for him, right? I, my first, uh -huh, the first painting I did, uh, <clears throat> oil painting, uh, I did it for my dad. Yeah, that was, that was cool. That was really cool. You know what I did for my mom? Uh, when we first started in the garage, Ricardo, uh, she hated the fact that I was tattooing. So what I did was uh, I was like, hey, I, I'm, I'm going to make money. I'm going to spend it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you half of whatever I make so you can save it for me. Right? Mm -hmm. So in one weekend, I gave her like 300 bucks. And she's like, what? You got this from tattooing? I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was only charging like $30 per tattoo, but... <laughs> <laughs> I can get more. Yeah. Uh, she's like, oh, so you can make money from this, huh? <laughs> yeah, I think that's when they start noticing yeah. where it could go. Yeah, our family, my mom still calls our shop um, the tattoo store. <laughs> they go in there and buy tattoos, I guess, you know? In the tatuajes. The tatuajes. Yeah. And, uh, and then when we tell them what kind of money we, that people are spending on tattoos, they're just like, it's a different world. They don't understand that. It's the locals. You know, they thought uh, we're going to make... Pintarse, like, pintarse la cola. <laughs> yeah. And they still trip out on that, you know? And that we make a lifestyle, we make a living out of it, and we enjoy it. That's yes. Work. It took a little while to convince them, and now it's just like, oh. Oh, you guys are going to a bigger shop. Okay, congrats. You know, like we're just like we're used to it already. So we're definitely changing the stigma in our family. You know, especially because they all the you know most of our family just do work that involves with their hands. You know, labor work. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing with my family. Straight. My dad hated tattoos. My mom too. Like no. seeing my brothers getting beat up. From, you know. You know what I mean? Like getting in trouble from getting their tattoos. So I had to change that perspective on them too, you know, because they seen it as like gang related. Gang related. Yeah, you know, exactly. I mean, the way we grew up, same, 
You know what I mean? Nothing but gangsters have their hood tatted on them. So they didn't want me to, you know, get into that. that. Yeah, yeah. They, I couldn't even get a fade. You know what I mean? I couldn't even wear Cortez's because they're that straight. Yeah. You know, my pops was old school yeah. Mexican. Same thing with us. A little baggy pants and my yeah. dad was like, yeah, that's cholo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> shit. You know? <laughs> Pero traigo botas a para. Traigo botas a para. Yeah, just speaking facts, cholo. bro. And that's, you know, we, we slowly had to break that. Yeah, that, that barrier. Mm -hmm. And um, it's crazy to see them now be proud of what I do because I, I turned that, that perspective into fine arts now. And like yeah. showing them mm -hmm. that you could do fine art on somebody's skin and... Sometimes they're amazed. Like I show my mom my work and my dad, they trip out like, wait, you do this, you know? And it feels good to see them, you know, be proud of the stuff I do now, you know? You brought up a good point, dude. I think that's the new phase of tattooing. Like it, it went from, you know, being in the underground, the bikers, the gang members. Yeah. Then it went into tattoo shops and it's okay. Now it's like, it's transcending to like high-end shops tattoo galleries, uh, fine art galleries. Now it's like pushing the limit and now anybody that has some, something even close to that is like pushing the level and it's like mm -hmm. Alan, you know, without Alan's, you know, um, history and pushing some of this, you know, cause him and his um, colleagues from the, from the yeah. other shop, right? Mm -hmm. Fine Line? Timeline, Timeline. Time time yeah. time um, you guys helped start that kind of stuff, you know? And that's, that's yeah. what a lot of the admiration we have. Cause you know, our shop is not, filled with a bunch of flash you know yeah. we just have tvs it's all white clean yeah. and it's all aesthetic and it's just about the client you know what i'm saying yeah yeah i'm yeah. trying to get a painting from madeline though so that's yeah. gonna go up yeah for sure. <laughs> right yeah, yeah like i said i said payments yeah. <laughs> that's a nice nugget so. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah definitely you're right about that like you know what i mean our line and Everybody from that generation paved the way for us, so exactly. That's what I, mean. I make sure you know. What I mean, I, I give my respects to you guys because without you guys, wouldn't they, wouldn't even be here, you know. So. And the people before that inspired him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. we always have to and have that dope. respect. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know? I always have respect for the for the other ones, like like Terry Morgan, man. Terry, yeah, Terry like, Morgan, fuck, for sure. man. She she had it tougher than anybody because it, she's a, a female that yeah, opened yeah, the door females. for us. To, to, you know what I mean? I've told you about her. That's she crazy. paints with us. Yeah. Um, she paints with us too. Shop owner, right? Yeah. Yeah, but she, she was she's shop. been around through everything, you know what I mean? Like, that's some, like the godmother of tattoo. Like, you yes. gotta give respects to her, like I did when I first came in here, and Tom Berg as well, you know? Yeah, Tom Berg too, man. That's yeah. And now we, you know, we're part of the Illinois Empire over there, Fontana. Mm -hmm. So now what me and Josh wanna do is give opportunities over there. There's a lot of youngsters out there that don't know that. Tattooing could be a profession, you know? Oh, yeah, definitely. And they're out there in the hustle, graffiti, or yeah, yeah. whatever, and we want to open up and give yeah. that opportunity. Like, yo, come here, man. Let me teach you a little game on this. No, yeah, you definitely. Know? That's 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 pimp to me because, um, you know, I recently teamed up with my boy. He's a photographer. His name's uh, Sammy.com. And uh, we went to our old high school. We went to the, the AP drawing and photography class with my old teacher, and he ha he had us over and we spoke to the students and talked to them and shared our story. Same thing how I'm doing right now and inspired them to yeah. to let them know that they could make it out yeah. and not be a statistic and do the same thing. You know what I mean? And know uh, it was crazy. It felt good. You know, it felt real good. I feel, I feel like that's the next step. You know, after uh, wherever everybody's experience levels is at. You know what I'm saying? You come to a point where you're like you want to get back and to, inspire to, and inspire really because yeah. yeah. That's dope, man. You guys doing that movement out there, you know? Inland yeah, Empire. man, because, like, in the Empire over there, like, you know, everybody talks about L.A., you know? And that's true. A lot of the the well-known artists are in L.A., you know? But there's a lot in the Empire, too, you know what I'm saying? And we just need that voice and an opportunity. And and even if it's not, like, the best, but at least we're showing younger people, like, yo, you don't have to go over there, you know? There's there's going to be a the place here for you, you know? Yeah. And that's where we're at, you know? That's cool, man. It keeps them out of trouble, too. That's one thing, like, tattooing saved me from a lot of stuff, you know? Yeah, dude. Imagine a kid coming up to you and, like, man, I took your class, you know, for that three months, and then I, you know, I was going to go into the gang or I was going to do this, but it decided I'm going to just stick with tattooing. So, you know, I went and found a job, you know, an apprenticeship at this shop or whether it's our shop or wherever. Yeah. And now I want to be a tattoo artist. And that, if we change one direction of one person to God, it, it seems cliche, you know? But it's true. Yeah, like yeah. I think that's where the, 
the fulfillment is, you know? Yeah, at least make some type of progress, right? Yeah. And then they're out there talking, you know, about the shop and giving you a reputation because we do want to, because nobody, dude, nobody gave us a chance. Yeah, of course. That's, that's another reason why I want to do something like that because I wish I was their age younger and saw this or else I would have been doing it way longer, you know? And Imagine you were 17 and you were drawing and somebody came up to you and yeah. they like, hey, let me show you the way, bro. Yeah, yeah. In exactly. five years from now, you're going to be making some yeah. more money than you're working at, a, you know, wherever. Wherever yeah, you yeah. aspire to. Exactly. You know, and you'll be like, what? Doing, doing what you love. Doing mm -hmm. what you love. Doing exactly. what I love. And it was great because back then, we didn't have, like, everything on YouTube and stuff that it was hard to learn. It like, was harder. You had to get tattooed or watch people tattoo. That's how I did. It's so crazy so how you said back then, 10 years ago. <laughs> I know, I know. But well, <laughs> like, shit has changed, bro. You know what I mean? like, but shit has changed. Like, now you get seminars. Not like, far. Crazy. And it's going to change even faster. Oh, it way is. faster than the next five years. I'm still old school in my, <laughs> my ways, bro. Handstands or everything. Do you have stencil? Yeah, I do. I do. Nice. Still uses clothes, bro. Huh? Oh, yeah? Like, you still use coils. You use the coils still? No. no. Worldwide. <laughs> Worldwide. Worldwide? Loyalty. In China. Hey, that's why he's like, huh? I can't hear. <laughs> uh, <laughs> speak to me on the left, uh, the left yeah. side. <laughs> yeah, no. It's crazy. Worldwide gave a lot of people their start. I mean, yeah. you start. Yeah, they did for me, too. Yeah. Everybody. Right. Little kid. Were... I bought the little kit, too. Yeah. yeah, bro. I thought I was a boss. Yeah. Is you know, briefcase everywhere? Yeah. <laughs> hey, you, you want me there? I'll show up. Did you ever walk in there? I used to be like, yeah, I want doctor, yeah, trabajar. Yeah. doctor? El doctor, because hey, I did, briefcase. Did you ever walk in there and look at the display, take your time and shit, like yeah, how you're yeah, like a yeah. boss, and they're like, oh, I want some of these and something. And then the Asian people right there were like, hurry up, man, just put your order in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I never went in. No? Yeah, me neither. I used to order that online. Online? I, 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 I oh. My neighbor, he's the one that started tattooing first, so. He used to get the stuff for me, and every time I needed new needles, I was like, hey, fool, here's the money. Oh, Order me okay. some, some new shit. Yeah. Look, back they back in the day, uh, you had to be part of the shop to, for you to order yeah. Yeah. tattoo machines. Yeah. They broke you it. You had to have a uh, shop. Uh -huh. Like yeah. the Mickey Sharps, dude? Yeah. When I bought my first Mickey uh, Sharps, I had to go through a shop. Uh -huh. the owner is, is that the one order over there by the Melrose, like on towards Venice? Uh, the one I went to is Mickey Sharps. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Still have them. Yeah, telephone dial. Oh yeah, the telephone dial. dial. When's the last time you used one that one? Man, yeah, I was wow. telling them that, that I really, my hands started hurting, bro, and to the point that I couldn't ride the motorcycle or, or even oh. playing guitar. And and I started, I went to the hospital and they were telling me like, it's, it was carpal tunnel because we keep our hands too tight and then it was so heavy. Yeah. And the vibration especially. Yeah. So, so, uh, um, I was telling them that uh, they told me to put something cold like a metal on the freezer and just kind of roll your hand on top of it. Oh, you know what I mean? Okay. And it started doing like stretching and stretching. And when I changed to these tattoo machines, that they're light, super light, it, it, it worked, man. It, it really worked. Yeah, and it, it, it don't so, shake as much. No. As... It, it, also, I put these little cushion things so it's even better. Yeah. And I haven't had any any problems since, so wow, that's crazy, man. But it was it was it was it was getting crazy, and it hurt a lot. Yeah, I think rotaries changed the game a lot. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Also, like you know, Cart to travel cartridges, cartridges yeah. everything that's possible. Not carrying the fucking tubes. Not carrying yeah. dirty tubes or yeah. or Dude. needles. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, or buying an ultrasound. Oh, fuck, I had ultrasound close, so, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. The sterilizer. Autoclave. The autoclave, uh huh. Mike, huh? Did you have to learn how to do autoclave and everything too? Oh, um, so. I did in the beginning, but then um, I just switched mm. to disposable grips after that. Made everything easier. But I remember seeing the cartridges on, on the magazines. Because Cheyenne started with the yeah. first, you know? And then they started out with, they were the ones who were kind of $5 dollars each. And I, I don't even know. Yeah, it looks pricing, expensive. Yeah, yeah. That's what it, yeah, it looked confusing to me at first. I was like, what the hell is this cartridge thing? Yeah, this whole thing. I remember I showed Johnny Tat. Remember I told you guys? Yeah. Oh, Johnny Tat? You know Johnny Tat? Yeah, he, I follow the work he's done. Um, I worked with him for a year. Oh, out of for his garage. Oh, like six months out of his garage. Yeah, he, I see him. Stuff. And uh, when I showed him, I'm like, look, dude, this is the future, man. But look how pricey it is. Should I buy one? And at that time, they were like 1600 bucks, right, for that machine, the Cheyenne? 1600 Yeah, at the time when it first came out. And I was like, what if it breaks? By the time it, you know, they ship it from Germany or whatever the hell, you know? Yeah. And they were like, no, let's not keep going. And then, 
boom, who would have thought this would have been like the what, like future of later. tattooing? And you see everything, even these freaking wireless batteries. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that changed the game for sure. Last Barbers last had wireless yeah. for a while. Huh? You know what I mean? Yeah. Barbers had right. wireless. Barbers, um, yeah. Yeah. So it, it was amazing that tattoos Same. machines like weren't like that. So. Like, I remember the first one, it was like a battery pack around your wrist. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I had one. Yeah. I don't know what, what oh, happened to it. Yeah, that was the only way, bro. Did you feel like Iron Man, bro? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Power Rangers. <laughs> Power Ranger, yeah. Power Ranger. Yeah, superhero. So I think we're about to end this. Um, and it's going a little deeper, so... <laughs> I'm just kidding. They call me Featherhand Allen. <laughs> Featherhand Allen from the strand. Painless. So this was a really, really interesting podcast. I'm glad Mike was able to jump on this. Um, thanks for coming down, bro. Yeah, no problem. Um, we got a lot of good information from uh, a lot of uh, good gems from you guys about the industry and everything. Um, it's hard to think right now. <laughs> Uh, thank you guys. Follow us on YouTube, uh, Instagram. We're on Spotify now as well and Apple Music. And uh, see you guys next week. Later. Peace.